Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Are you a new or experienced investor wanting to learn how to have a successful syndication business? Learn from the nation's leading syndication expert, my friend, Vinny Smile Chopra. He has created a multifamily academy where you will learn everything about deal analyzing to selecting emerging markets, managing assets, and much more. In the academy, you'll find over 500 lectures and templates to help you run a successful syndication business. Your membership also gives you access to Vinny every Wednesday through masterminding and coaching calls. Vinny came to the U.S. with only $7 and now is a CEO of five companies, acquiring and managing a portfolio of more than 3,500 units. He's completed 26 successful syndications ranging from 50 to 500 units and created a portfolio valued over $200 million in commercial real estate. He built the academy to teach and mentor investors like you to succeed. To learn more about the Multifamily Academy, text LEARN, L-E-A-R-N, to 474747 or call his team at 925 766 Three five one eight. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Ryan McKenna. Thanks for being on the show, Ryan. Thanks, Whitney. Uh, pleasure to be on here. Happy to have you on the show. I've known Ryan a little while now and uh, seen a lot of the work he's been doing, his business growing, and he's doing some big stuff. It's great to have him on and be able to share with the listeners. Uh, but he is a full-time real estate investor and founder of McKenna Capital, a private equity firm that provides opportunities for investors to become passive equity partners in institutional quality, recession-resistant real estate. Focusing on value-add multifamily, self-storage, and manufactured home parks, McKenna Capital has helped investors allocate capital across 5,000 plus units with a combined asset value of over, what, what is that number? <laughs> Half a billion dollars. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Thank you, Ryan, for being on the show. It's, um, you've accomplished a lot and we, we want to hear about it. So tell the listeners you know, who you are and, and let's get into how you got to where you are. Yeah, no, thank, thanks, Whitney. Uh, I guess, yeah, a little background on me. Uh, I guess I'll start. I, I live right outside of Chicago. I've got a wife and two daughters. Um, let's see, uh, got started in real estate. Actually, first learned about real estate syndication back in the early 2000s when I was playing baseball at Arizona State. A teammate of mine, his father was an apartment syndicator. So I uh, kind of went had some free time, uh, you know, started chatting with him. I was really interested in uh, what he was doing, and he really kind of got me introduced to the, the syndication model and basically pooling together a bunch of investors to buy large apartments. And so I was really kind of hooked as, as you know, something that I thought someday you know, I want to do that. And uh, I, I guess I went through kind of a series of events in my life that really got me into the real estate syndication business. And, you know, a lot of that happened when uh, my baseball career didn't work out. I, I got uh, really sick towards the end of my sophomore year. And, uh, got diagnosed with ITP. It's a, it's a it was blood platelet disorder that was very similar to leukemia and lupus. And I'm completely fine now. But, you know, during that time, I, I spent a lot of time in the hospital and, you know, kind of did some soul searching where, you know, I knew baseball wasn't going to work out. And the doctors told me you'll never play again. And so in the back of my mind, I had to start thinking about, you know, what my life was going to look like and, and be like now. And around that time, I, you know, as I was talking to this Apartment syndicator. I, I came across the Rich Dad Poor Dad, Poor, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad book by Robert Kiyosaki, and that became like my blueprint for you know my investing career and and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to I guess design my life one day to have a, a bunch of assets that produce cash flow and that can grow my wealth and that are in a, a tax efficient manner. So um, you know if I fast forward um, you know 15 years or so, you know I, I'm now living that dream that you know back when I was in the hospital bed trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do. And um, I finally got there and uh, a lot of learning along the way. And uh, like most started off with the single family home just to kind of dip my toe into um, that type of business and, and quickly learned if I wanted to scale, I had to get into multifamily syndication. And so um, that's really where uh, my personal investing started and uh, where I was able to recently leave uh, the corporate world and uh, pursue McKenna Capital full time, uh, not only you know, investing um, in a lot of syndicated deals, but raising capital 
and uh, absolutely love what I'm doing right now. And uh, yeah, happy to share more on, on uh, where we are today and what we're looking to do. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I, uh, congratulations to you for, you know, doing this full time and making it happen. And I know it's taking a lot of hard work getting there, especially when you're working full time as well. Um, but, you know, tell us, elaborate a little bit, you know, you started the single family homes and, and but why move into the syndication space, elaborate a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so the single family homes, I think like most, it's kind of maybe an easier way to get into real estate investing. And, uh, you know, like most, I was trying to kind of look at how many homes I would need to acquire to kind of get to that financial freedom number. And uh, after a few single family rentals, I learned, you know, what I liked about the business, but I also learned what I didn't like about the business. And uh, for someone that, you know, wants to do passive real estate invest in investments, um, the, the single family route really wasn't passive to me. Uh, it was a lot of work. Um, I was essentially like the property manager as well. I got those phone calls late at night. I had to just deal with a lot of things that just made it more of an active investment. And at the end of the day, the returns were nowhere near what I'm getting today for basically doing nothing after I funded a deal or, you know, or made an investment. And uh, that was just, you know, shocking to me that um, I, I'm glad I learned it early on, but, um, but yeah, just, for the deals I'm doing today, it's it just a uh, much easier. Um, I would say there's less risk involved because back when I was doing the single family homes, you know, I'm putting more of my capital into that deal. I'm responsible for a larger portion of that investment. And to be honest, I was probably less experienced than most because I was, you know, doing this for the first and second time, you know, of, of owning property. And, uh, and, and so there was some risk involved and it turned out okay. But I, I quickly, you know, realized that, if I wanted to be in this long term and I wanted to grow my wealth, I couldn't, I couldn't scale with the current, uh, you know, single family rental um, investments I had. So your focus now is, I mean, you're building an, an investor database, database really. And, and right. I mean, you are able to uh, raise large, large amounts of capital. You're, you are, um, I mean, you're, you're building a great business and a great name for yourself, I know. And, and, but get it, get us started with how you got started. And I know everybody that, um, that is listen not everybody but a lot of listeners are, are trying to do the same thing and they dream about being in your seat right now and so you know when you first started raising capital you first started talking to investors how did that begin how did you you know learn the ins and outs how how, how did you educate yourself maybe a couple of key ways that you you know educated yourself early on yeah yeah so um again, going back to what I learned early on, um, back when I was in college, I mean, I just started reading every book I could on real estate investing because I just knew that this was my path to financial freedom and was going to figure out a way to do it. And, um, eventually I started, uh, becoming a passive investor in other, uh, syndicated deals. And I did my first five deals with, uh, that, that mentor I mentioned earlier, my, my, my teammate's father, and I was really just studying how they were putting the deals together and getting a good sense for the different markets they were focused in on, you know, um, the different um, you know, the returns I could uh, get from investing in these types of deals. And then I, I started doing other deals uh, with other syndicators because I had every intention of wanting to go and, and do my own deals at some point. And so I got into about 12 opportunities and uh, as a passive investor, but along the way, I had friends and family, coworkers were asking me more and more about these deals I was investing in. And uh, I knew there was a lot of interest, but I never really had a way to help bring them in to these opportunities because a lot of them were, you know, through relationships I had and uh, just a lot of people didn't really know uh, much about the, the operators. And then I found out about the ability to start raising capital for some of these projects. And that's really when my business took off because now I had, you know, built a pretty good um, base of people in my network that were interested in investing in multifamily syndications. Um, but then I could actually now bring them into the deal. Um, and so I was able to, by partnering with other operating partners, I had some access to some great deal flow and kind of the two together is what really um, allowed the business to take off. And so we've had a tremendous amount of success over the last 18 months or so. Um, we've done over 20 syndicated deals and I've got a you know, very strong investor base. Um, but it might look like this happened overnight. It didn't. I mean, my investors are coming from, you know, 15, 20 years of relationships, people that I've just known for a long time that when I got into the capital raising business, I didn't just, oh, say, hey, I got a deal. Do you want to invest? I mean, it was, you know, many months in advance of just letting them know what I was, you know, pursuing, what I was doing, sharing a little bit more about, you know, this type of investment. So when that first opportunity came along, 
they already had had several conversations with me. They were comfortable and they were able to quickly move on that um, opportunity if they were interested in investing in it. Wow. So, you know, how did you start to grow your network? I know you said most of those relationships were, you know, you had for 15, 20 years or some long term. And, you know, and I guess speak to somebody who, uh, you know, they don't have that network coming into this business maybe. Uh, but, you know, how did you start to grow your network? So I started to grow my network. It started, again, friends, family, coworkers. Um, but then I started looking for ways that I could reach um, an investor base that would have interest investing in these type of deals. Because typically it's you know, higher net worth individuals. Obviously, we're, we're working mainly with accredited investors. So um, I looked for areas that I could you know, run across and meet and network with people that I thought might have an interest. And so um, I also do... Um, angel investing, I'm part of Irish Angels. Uh, it's a great network um, where there's you know, a ton of accredited investors, entrepreneurs. And that was my way to really kind of associate, surround myself with other people that were interested in investing. Um, we were investing in businesses, but they also invest in real estate. So I do a lot in the angel investing uh, world and work with a lot of entrepreneurs there who, um, you know, who, who like the, the passive investing um, deals that we're putting together. Um, but I also, you know, work with a lot of investors. This is our first investment and a lot of education goes into um, this and, and having them uh, become aware of these types of opportunities because I would say most people have no idea that this type of investment opportunity exists. And it's actually been my mission to go out there and spread the word because I want people to know that there's alternatives to the stock market out there and that there's great ways to, to grow your wealth and, and, and to create those passive income streams. So I, early on, was just talking to kind of any and everyone. And I was doing phone calls, emails, coffees, I mean, multiple times a day. And it just kind of spread from there. It took a little while, but eventually I started to generate a lot of interest. And then when people started investing with me, then they had friends and family that were interested. And then they would share it. And then I would connect with them. And then it just really kind of snowballed. Um, but I put a lot of time into my network, a lot of time into reaching out, you know, proactively to have that just initial conversation. And I always took the approach that this was never about a sales pitch. It was, it was never pushy. It was just as simple as, Hey, if, if I was going to share this opportunity with you, it's because I think really highly of you. It's because I think you'd have interest in at least learning more about it. And that was my approach. I mean, I, I just would hope someone would think of me as that person if they had a great opportunity. And so, again, no pressure. There was no, um, you know, there was no need for them to jump into something right away. It was just kind of a, a slow, methodical, educational approach. And uh, you kind of marry that with a great opportunity or, or multiple opportunities. And then, you know, you, there's your business. And then you just kind of take it from there. And you keep doubling down on the areas that, that work well for you. And uh, even though we've had a, a lot of success, I've not taken my foot off the, the pedal here. I mean, I continue to network every single day, continue to grow the investor base, continue to help educate, because I know that there's so many people out there that um, are really appreciative that you know, they can learn about these types of investments. And so I get great satisfaction uh, talking about awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah, and how are you educating your investors? What are, what are you doing exactly to educate them? Well, a perfect example would uh, to be on a show like this, Whitney, uh, this is a great, uh, great show, great audience. Uh, my investors will love to just, you know, kind of hear more about, you know, what you're doing. And I know you have a lot of great guests on. So yes, through podcast interviews, um, I, I write, um, you know, several blogs, try to do a couple a month. Um, let's see, um, industry events. I try to kind of go and connect not only with other investors, but other operating partners and this kind of whole real estate investing ecosystem. I mean, there's just so many people involved and I want to just kind of be at the, in the middle of it in, in a way and just to continue to keep building relationships. Um, so that's really where, you know, again, my presence is, I feel like, you know, from a thought leadership perspective, it's podcast blogs, um, you know, anything with social media and, um, and again, just trying to build your brand. So people, know who you are and what you do because if they don't they'll never have the opportunity to maybe come across this or to have a conversation with you about it and uh, no that's that's awesome yeah you're just putting yourself out there and it gives you content to send to your investors as well doesn't it? yeah yeah it's a great way to just um you know a lot of people learn different you know some people like to read some people like to see a, a video or listen to a podcast and so i just try to kind of try different things and and uh you know you learn from you know 
the previous experiences, what works, what doesn't, but I think you got to at least go out and try everything to, to kind of know, and then you'll, you'll get a good sense for where you should focus your efforts kind of going forward. What, what kind of CRM are you using? So I use a uh, pipe drive to manage my investor database, but MailChimp is really um, kind of my lifesaver uh, as far as putting all the deals together and being able to reach a large audience um, and, and to kind of manage everything that we put together in an easy to use um, kind of automated um, system. So the investors have really liked that they can kind of get everything in one email and see everything and it's all kind of linked up. Um, and it allows me to kind of repeat a lot of the, you know, the, the announcements and the deals we put together. So it's kind of saved uh, my life in a way um, from an efficiency standpoint. Nice. And, and tell me about your like follow-ups with investors. How are you com- keeping the relationships active? So a lot of this is through, um, you know, I make a note to everyone that I've talked to or that if I haven't talked to, I try to reach out and um, strike up, even if it's a 15 minute conversation. Um, But I I try to keep them in the loop with what we're doing because I know that timing is everything. And there's investors now that they're, they have no intention of investing right now in any of our deals, but they want to get educated because they want to learn this. They want to take their time and they might become an investor next year, two years down the road. And that's like the beauty of, I think, you know, what we're doing is that there is no pressure. Um, you know, if you want to invest in a deal, yeah, that's great. You can, but there's a lot of people that want to learn. And so I think having, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of deals that we're working on and we've been doing about, I used to say a deal a month, but it's been about two lately. Um, they just get to learn and see the different opportunities. And um, it's a great way for them to ask questions. And either they'll email me or we'll set up time for a call and I can walk them through, you know, the, the type of the investment opportunity that maybe they've seen or that we're, we're um, you know, we're targeting. And so um, they, they learn that way. And then, you know, whenever they're ready, they, they, they will reach out and, and, and invest. And so um, it, it's just this constant um, just being in front of them, being available, educating them, trying to put out good content, sometimes it's just sharing, you know, news articles of what's going on in our industry too. Um, so I have a monthly newsletter that usually kind of highlights kind of the latest industry trends or news that we're, you know, we're seeing out there. It'll also showcase some of the, you know, the podcasts, uh, the blogs that may have been written, and then also kind of a summary of deals that we're working on or emerging opportunities. So it gives them kind of an overview of everything on a monthly basis. And it's just a great uh, cadence for them that just, you know, want to kind of keep, keep in the loop, but not, you know, be involved in every opportunity that comes out. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. No, it's, it's important to stay in front of them for sure. Uh, and so how do you stand out though? How do you stand out amongst other operator or other capital raisers or operators, you know, that are raising capital for deals and how, you know, what, what sets you apart or ways maybe that, you know, you stand out or communicate or things you do? Yeah. And, and that's a great question because I think we're all kind of, I think from the outside, people could look at it and feel like, Hey, you guys all do the same thing or you're all, um, you know, it's kind of confusing. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I just, I want my investors to know that, you know, I'm doing this because I I personally believe in it. I'm investing in the deals. I'm looking at this through the investor lens because essentially that's what I did. I mean, I'm following, you know, my footsteps here where I was able to walk away from the corporate world after investing in several syndicated deals. And I more or less just want others to have the, you know, the same ability to invest in the deal and, and whether, you know, whatever the, the reason is for them, I just want them to, to know that I'm looking at this through their eyes as well, because we want to obviously pick the right partners, have long standing partnerships in place and try to generate the highest returns that we can. Um, so I, I just think it's, it's really important to just be there. And also I, I think communication is huge in this industry. And I, I can tell you, you know, I, I get a lot of great feedback that, Hey, you're always willing to, to talk with us, even if we're not ready right now, even if it, you know, they think it might be a dumb question. I mean, there's no dumb question in my mind. I think a dumb question is not even asking one, you know, and, uh, and I just, uh, I, I love what I do and I, I want to help other people. And I think they feel that. And I would say in this business, trust is a, is a big, it's a big deal. And I think that's what allowed me to get off to a quick start is because I had built a lot of relationships in, you know, my previous working, you know, um, fields that I was in and just throughout the years I've always made, maintained pretty good contact with everyone. And so I think 
trust is a big, um, big factor here and someone, you know, willingness to invest with you because if they don't know you and like you, they're probably not going to invest with you. And, um, at the end of the day, uh, if they can get comfortable with it and they think you've got a nice, you know, easy, smooth process and you're going to be the one staying in contact with them, essentially maybe holding their hand through the deal. Um, I, I think that type of service, that level of, you know, um, I, I guess detail that, that we go through in putting our deals together. Um, we've just had great feedback and, um, but it's not, I don't think it's anything that's anyone couldn't replicate, but I would like to think that people couldn't, <laughs> you know, replicate me in a sense that I am who I am. And, and, you know, uh, I either going to like me or not. And, uh, but I'm someone that's going to be looking out for my investors. It's someone that, you know, I'm someone that wants to do this long term and, 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 uh, you know, provide for my family just like they want to. So I think at the end of the day, I tell all my investors, this is one big partnership we're in. It's like you going back to my sports days. This is my sports team. We're all on this together. Yeah, yeah. We're all, you know, a piece of a small piece of a bigger asset that we're you know acquiring. And, and so there's this feeling of like, we're in this together. And I think they, they like that. And I try to make that um, stand out because it's not just me. I wouldn't have a business if it wasn't for, investors that were interested in, in talking with me about kind of the latest deals we're looking at. So I owe a lot of credit to, to them. And, um, and they also push me too, because they're, I've got some really smart, sophisticated investors and, you know, I get great feedback. Um, I've got several that it's like almost having my own underwriting team because they'll give me feedback on the deals we're looking at. And so uh, I think it's important to include them and involve them so that, you know, they can, you know, help you um, get better at what you're doing. I agree. I, and I liked your analogy too. I mean, just, I mean, you're holding their hand through the deal uh, and being available. Now that's, that's some great qualities. And what about, um, what about operator like selection, you know, how you're picking who you're going to partner with? Cause you're, I mean, you're partnering with this team, you're becoming part of this team, uh, you know, and, and operating in, inside of this business uh, or, you know, that somebody else has essentially created, but you're coming in and you're, so you're, I mean, you're trusting them, obviously, you know, how are you selecting those teams? Yeah, that's a great question because that's very important to our business model. And um, I can tell you that, you know, we get asked all the time to raise capital for, for many deals. And 99% of the time we're saying no because of just our process in, in partnering with an operating partner. Uh, we're not looking to do a one-off deal. We're not transactional. We want to build a long-term relationship. So before we even look at a deal, we want to get to know that operating partner and, and get to know who they are personally, their character, their integrity, and feel like, you know, they're going to be a good fit for us to kind of grow together because again, we're planning on doing multiple deals with them. And so once we vetted out that, and, and we're also not only personally talking with them, meeting with them, you know, discussing things, I've got a lot of contacts in the industry that you know, know of them, maybe you've done deals with them, investors that have invested with them before. So there's, there's a lot of different um, factors that go into finding the right operating partner. Um, but then once we kind of get over that, then, you know, we focus on the deal when they have that first opportunity. And usually if they've checked all the boxes on the front end, um, you know, the deal is kind of secondary to us. And then we obviously look at, you know, if that fits within our criteria of, of the, what we're seeing out in the market, um, then we do our due diligence and then we move forward with the investors. So, um, you know, I, I think as we continue to evolve, I try to balance out the demand that we have from the investor base with the number of opportunities. Um, right now we've got eight operating partners that we work with. And so um, there's definitely times where we're busier than others. But um, I think at the end of the day, you know, I'd rather have fewer operating partners and do more deals with them because all it takes is one bad deal and you essentially could jeopardize your whole business or your reputation. And so, you know, a lot of, you know, my reputation is tied to the performance of these deals. And I want to make sure that we're doing the right things. And if there's a problem that we're very transparent, uh, we let everyone know um, where things stand right away. And, and so I think building that trust again with investors, that's what they expect. And that's what I try to deliver because um, you know, no one's perfect in this, in this world here. And uh, I think we all can try to do everything the right way and be proactive and try to find the best relationships. I think it'll put us in a good spot, but I'm also, you know, not naive to think that, there won't ever be some bumps along the way that we're just going to have to deal with and, and make the most out of that sure, situation. Sure. And what's some way that you've recently improved your business that we could all apply to ours? So let's see, <laughs> I feel like there's every day I'm trying to do something to, to improve, you know, my business and make it better. Um, you know, I'm constantly trying to redesign upgrade, you know, my website just to 
again, from the, the standpoint with Google and SEO and having people kind of, um, you know, find your, your business, if they're just doing a general search, I mean, that's where I'm spending a lot of time now. I'm talking with a couple of marketing companies to just from a branding perspective to, to kind of just help me with that because a lot of this I've, I started, you know, I built on my own, but I'm getting to the point where we're growing enough that I need to start outsourcing some things so I can spend more time with the investors and the operate partners. So uh, again, from the, the branding awareness standpoint, um, I'm working with, um, you know, just, just people to kind of help take some, some, you know, load off my plate. I'm looking into, um, you know, executive assistants to just, again, allow me to, to kind of push off some of the more of the administrative tasks. And, um, you know, I, I think right now that's kind of, kind of where I'm at with uh, how I'm trying to make the business better. Um, but at the end of the day, I just think for me, it's important to make myself available. So if we get busier, I got to also you know, take that in consideration. What can I outsource? Because at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, the investors are going to want to talk with you. They're, they're going to want you to have time for them. And I don't ever want to get in a position where I'm too busy for them. And so I'm constantly monitoring that. And so a lot of this is, is my time management that I think it, it comes into play here because you've got to manage everything you're doing. And, and you know, my right. family is very important to me. And I want to make sure I have time for my family too. So I think it's being smart about how you build your business. And when you get, you know, as you, as you grow, you got to look to, to bring on help. And that's kind of the where I'm at right now. That's a must. No doubt. Yeah. It would change your business. That's for sure. Uh, but what, what's the, um, what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I think, uh, I mean, for me, probably my passion, I would say with, with what I, I, I bring to this. I mean, this has been 15, 20 years in the making for me to finally get to this point. And I absolutely love what I'm doing. It does not feel like work to me. I told someone the other day, this is the first time in my life, you know, I've done a lot of different things from a business perspective. I've had other businesses. I, you know, wanted to be, um, you know, a major league baseball player that didn't work out, but I actually feel like this is the first time I'm doing something where I feel like I was, I was born to do this. And I, I just, I think it's a great feeling because I know it, it doesn't happen overnight. And a lot of people will probably work the rest of their life trying to get there. And I feel lucky that I'm here. And I think that has contributed to my success because I can continue to, you know, to keep, you know, helping others, educating others, but also be doing it in a way where I'm not getting burned out. I, I love what I do. I love having investor conversations and um, I love the partnerships too. I mean, that's another thing that has allowed me to really accelerate my business because I didn't do this by myself. I mean, I had great partners along the way, great mentors, great operating partners. And I think that's really important because that will take your business to a whole nother level and, and give you that credibility that experience that you know some starting out might not have so I think when you couple that with with your passion behind it all it, it's going to be um, a successful journey and how do you like to give back Ryan before we before we have to go so uh, you know, I I give back financially to, to a lot of different organizations that are you know near and dear to me but I'd say the biggest way I give back is, is through my time um, as mentioned earlier, I, I'm very busy kind of managing a lot of different things, but I always make time for investors. I always make time to help someone out if they've got questions, um, not only from a you know, real estate syndication perspective, but I, being part of Irish Angels, I, I've helped out there with other entrepreneurs that are looking to help grow their business or looking for guidance. And um, it's just being there for them and helping them based upon you know, the experiences you had in your life and sharing what what's worked what hasn't worked um so i think at the end of the day i've learned a lot from mentors other people that have kind of brought me under their wings i'm trying to do the same for, for others out there because it, it's all about giving back and that's how we all grow together nice and ryan thank you again for being on the show tell the listeners how they can learn more about you and get in touch with you great well uh they can go to mechanicapital.com that's uh our, our website um there they can you know basically see everything they would on us. Uh, we're on Instagram, um, you know, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, any of those, uh, you know, social media mediums, they can follow us as well, get more information um, on what we're up to. Nice. Ryan, thanks again for your time and expertise and sharing uh, with me and the listeners. And I appreciate the listeners being with us today and every day. And I hope you'll go to the real estate uh, syndication show on Facebook also and join us there and get active in the group and learn from experts like Ryan. And so we can grow our businesses together. We'll talk to each of you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the real estate syndication show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. 
LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.